Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader and I'm here with the weekly evolutionary astrology message. I'm sitting here on the banks of the Yalcon River, it's called the Green River, and where was once an old mill house that used to provide flour to the neighboring villages. Napoleon's army was stationed here, the British army was stationed here. God, it goes back 4,000 years. The Egyptian army was stationed here. This was the biggest supplier of fresh water to all this region. And it was devastated ecologically, devastated. But now, it slowly gets its, re its redemption. Animals coming back, people coming back, and nature being able to grow sustainably and flourish once more. I'm here to talk to you this week about the full moon in Cancer, so I thought a body of water would be appropriate. <laughs> we are going through an emotional maturity process. All through this last period, we're being asked relentlessly to look within us, to find our own truth, to bridge the gap between what we believe in and how we actually act in life. The last few days have been days of many changes, both internally and externally, both privately and publicly. It's a turning point. It's a turning point and a time that we can close a lot of open ends from the past. On January 7th, the Sun is conjunct Pluto in the sky in Capricorn. And that highlights the change that needs to occur with, within who we are, the light that we radiate upon this universe by what we do and create. In the best way, this could be a time of positive change, deep authenticity that rises and changes the way we are and what we do. And really acknowledges our inner strength. Rekindling that deep furnace within us that takes us forward into a better life change needs to occur and it needs to be authentic. That's in the best possible way. And remember that we still have this opposition between Uranus and Jupiter all the time asking us to move forward, find our place in the group and do it authentically. Do it in the way we believe in. Do it truthfully. So not only that we have the Sun conjunct Pluto, you know, in the worst scenario, this could be a time in which we relentlessly dig within ourselves and see all the darkest garbage within our cellars. And that creates devastation and that creates chaos and that creates, we can see the chaos that was created because of our tendencies, because of what we did, because of what we created, because of who we were. And again, highlighting the change that needs to occur. And this could be either from a place of chaos and pain or either from a place of finding that inner strength and going through that transmutation, initiating that change. Venus is standing at this time on the south node, on the dragon's tail. And that's a time that people, relationships, whether they are romantic or not, or projects that we haven't finished completely with, rise up from the past and come back into our life. Again, recalibrating us through remembering who we were who we were with and what we were doing <laughs> through the line of time and our growth, making us again understand better who we truly are 
whether we like it or not. <clears throat> On January 8th, we can breathe a sigh of relief, of relief because Mercury that was retrograde for the past three weeks is finally starting its forward movement and we can see schedules and navigation and electrical, electrical appliances and communication, anything connected to written data going back to its natural form, logics back in place, we could continue the race. And that would create a sigh of relief. Of relief. And the days after the 8th leading to the 12th of January are a, a days of great energetic buildup to the full moon in Cancer on the 12th in 22 degrees Cancer. We have a lot of planets on 22 degrees. We're going to talk about them. Jupiter is in 22 degrees. Again, our philosophy, our truth, our authenticity to what we believe in, our need to go beyond our boundaries, and step to the unknown, step out of our comfort zone, and Uranus on the other side, 20 degrees, but still very powerful opposition, taking us forward. Think outside the box. Just look at, find the elite group that believe the same things that you do and connect to that group. Take things forward together. So we have this great energetic buildup coming up with the full moon in Cancer. The full moon in Cancer is going to stand in opposition to that sun in Capricorn conjunct Pluto. Again, adding up to that boiling big pot of emotion. So that could be a highly emotional time, for better or worse. But the point of it is, that we need to reconnect to ourselves. What is the moon? The moon is our authenticity, the things that we identify with emotionally. Our family, our motherhood and parenting, our own mother, our past, our own femininity, an inner emotional side. So all of that is being challenged. All of that is being faced with a very powerful mirror that makes us understand that we need to be ourselves, whether we like it or not. And if things need to change, we better work on it if we want our future to be better. Remember that that opposition between Uranus and Jupiter started in the, at the end of 2010, the beginning of 2011, with the Arab Spring, with all these global rise, uh, um, global um, revolutions, social revolutions, here in Israel, in Spain, all over Europe, Occupy Wall Street, and all over the Arab world, as well as in many other countries. So the, the cycle that began at that time is getting to fruition. Conclusions have to be made. We understand that we can no longer push away the responsibility and give it to others. It is our own responsibility, each and every one. Each and every one. So it is tiring, this, this relentless drive towards the betterment of ourselves and our society and our nature and our globe. But it's an amazing process that reconnects us to ourselves. Add to that that Venus, which is in Pisces, is conjunct Neptune during the next week. We get the Piscean atmosphere all over the place. At the best possible way, Venus that is in charge of love, relationships, and satisfaction, and income, and anything material that we digest in this world. In Pisces, conjunct Neptune, we could want to float on these transcendental waters and just be connected to that heaven all around us, connected to nature, connected to the world, connected to people. 
We could be so romantic, we could be so naive. Our rose-tinted glasses are at their height. And that, if we're not careful, could lead us into situations which were not expected, which are not under our control, and that can really melt away our personal boundaries and our own identity. And again, that could be a good thing, changing it for the better, or that could be dangerous, and we could find ourselves in situations that we don't know how we ended up in. So watch that. Add to that, to the fact that Mars, the planet of energy and, in, and uh, initiative, and everything male within us, and of course anger and violence, is going to conjunct Chiron next week. But we could feel it from the end of this week already. Then that again adds to that emotional, I mean, Chiron is that wounded healer, the place that hurts within us, our old known wound, and the place that if we actually do things right, we can not only heal our own selves, but heal people with the same kind of wound, because we're so knowledgeable in that place already. But it is also our painful spot, and when Mars gets there, it's either that we need to have decisive action to change the places that are hurt within us and move away from that perpetual cycle of pain and anger, pain and anger, pain and frustration, pain and anger. Really go in and drill inside, take all the past I'm sorry away and heal that place once and for good. Or we could experience that cycle of pain again and really spiral out of control. We could see people losing it, being very angry, furious, and in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. So we have the choice where we take it from too. And where is the key to all of that? Again, Saturn in 22 degrees <laughs> conjunct Juno in 22 degrees in Sagittarius. Do what you believe in. Do what in the past Saturn has proved itself, Saturn, what proved to be reliable and trusted Saturn. Juno, do what you've been faithful to. Be with the ones who are faithful to you and that you are faithful to. With the things and themes that you have been faithful to. And of course, full moon in Cancer, your family, your home, places in which you feel familiar with, that you can identify emotionally with, the people closest to you, your clan. Connect. This is how to move through this emotional pregnancy and be born on the other side, happy and willing, healthy and able. To do the things, the great, great things that we still need to do. I want to thank you for listening and I wish this week would be a very fruitful process for you. Because remember that cancer is all about going inside to provide a safe space for us to have that pregnancy, to have that process and actually give birth to it when the time is right. So we begin. May we have a nice cycle. Thank you for listening. This is Boaz Feiler. And of course, for private consultations via Skype or lectures or anything you want to ask, courses, let me know. Goodbye.